just got breaking news on this one. Uh, We're going to be talking about yeah. Epic versus Apple. Malik, you know, take it away. You got oh, this. Oh, man. <laughs> All yes, right. I so uh, I read through the entire lawsuit. Well, about about 90% oh, of it. I didn't, I didn't read. How many pages is that? 65 <laughs> pages. I read through 50 of the pages. No. Um, Apple <laughs> is in a lot more trouble than people think. Um, this goes beyond them just charging more for in-app purchases. Um, it actually goes into how they have created a monopoly and a trust within the iOS development market. Um, and what that basically means is that Apple controls their hardware, their software, and then who can put what software onto their devices. Um, Epic brings up 10 total counts against uh, Apple. Um, some of them are about the Sherman Act. Um, there's six counts with the Sherman Act, which uh, is against antitrust. Um, and basically what they're trying to say is, is when you buy a computer or you buy, you know, a, a PlayStation or you buy any sort of hardware, you can choose what software and what operating system you want to put on there. And you can generally choose where you want to get your games. And one thing that they bring up is that Steam is the predominant uh, platform or predominant software where people will get their games on PC. Yeah. On Apple devices and iOS, you don't really get that option. And one thing that somebody actually brought forward to me, one of my friends, is that there are development companies that only focus on transferring Mac OS games to iOS. Sid Meier Civilization VI, uh, it's not compatible on Apple. Uh, my girlfriend, for instance, can't play Jurassic World Evolution on her Mac because it just doesn't allow it. So there's a lot of games that just Apple kind of blocks out, and they force these developers to kind of develop a whole nother game and, you know, systems to make it work with their operating systems. And Epic is trying to say, this is unfair. Not only are you forcing these developers to spend more money to get onto your system, you're also charging significantly more for in-app purchases. Um, the numbers that I have is um, Apple takes a 30% processing fee for all microtransactions. Okay. On Google Play Store, it's 2.6%. Yeah. And if you did it through PayPal, it would be 2.1%, which is what people would wow. use on like Steam. Yeah. So that 28% processing fee difference is huge. And I think that not, this isn't, a lot of people are kind of making this out to be, you know, Fortnite versus Apple. And it's actually Epic looking out for the interests of gamers going forward. Yeah, yeah, because we know we know Epic and Apple, they both have money. Like, you know, they, they could probably feed the world with yeah. all their money that they have. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what we should be fighting for. But right? instead, we're talking about this, which is fine. I love games. <laughs> uh, but I think what it means is, like you mentioned, Malik, like there's a lot of smaller developers that – have to pay that 28% extra. And that could be a lot. Say if it's like a small development team, like one to five people, like that's, that's a lot for them just to get their game out there. And yeah. now today there, and let me just mention too, like, how do you guys feel about how Epic kind of came about this with the video? The, they mocked the Apple commercial. I think it was 1984 was the Apple commercial. Yeah. It was an old. It was an old Apple commercial, and it was it was a mock of it. And I think it's good, but I also think that this is kind of harsh to say. But Epic needs to realize their audience as well. Yeah, I think yeah. a uh, hundred million ten year olds are gonna be like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> I have Google. So, this is so familiar, but I don't know what, from what. Like, it kind of looks right. familiar. Well, they're trying to reference George Orwell, and then they're trying to get a bunch of 10-year-olds and then their parents on board with they, going against are, Epic. I don't, really care, I don't think this fight is for the kids. They no. they would have catered the video to the kids, right? The kids know. don't control the money. It's so funny. They There's need, only like a bunch of kids watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're all talking about it and we're not the kids that are playing fortnite right like they were making a statement i think right. it was just like a real slap in the face that like really showed that they're gonna be vocal about this they don't care how big apple is they don't care about how many devices they are on but now do they care malik because 
What did Apple nope. do today? Or sorry, today, what, did, uh, what did Apple do? Today, Apple, and there's actually a little bit more of a development from when I first posted this. So Apple has informed Epic Games that they will terminate all of their dev, uh, all their developer accounts and cut Epic off from iOS and Mac development tools. Um, what that I, means I, beyond I, Fortnite is anything, and this has been uh, reported on by Slasher, uh, anything, any app that is developed using Unreal Engine will not be eligible to be on the iOS uh, marketplaces. That's so ridiculous. any small developers <laughs> that are using Unreal, they are going to be hurt by this too, which it, it sucks because Epic is trying to fight for the small guy and yeah. Apple is saying, okay, we'll just step on the small guy. They're, yeah. they're kind of skirting the problem with Epic and punishing everyone else for it, hoping, and for me, it looks like they're trying to do a crowd fear mess of making all these de smaller developers scared for their products yep. and trying to get them to go to Epic and say, well, can we hold calm off on down. this? Yeah, calm it down. Yeah. Calm it down. And, that's horrible. What, uh, Caboose, what do you think about this? I think we're <laughs> like immediately jumping to the defense of Epic, but also they allowed their game to be available on Apple for like a year and a half and were pretty complicit for that time. So, well, they weren't, though. They weren't. They've actually made cases to Apple before. There were actually a few right. other games, developers, when they go through the development process. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think uh, some of the developers said that, you know, Apple kept saying they'll look into it. They'll look in. You know, it yeah. was kind of like an empty promise. So. You also signed the papers so, and said yes, and you knew that you were going to make a ton of money off of having your game available on Apple iOS. I'm just saying, like, yeah. there's, there's <laughs> definitely, I, like, if I'm choosing a side... Although I don't know if I'm choosing a side. But if I were to, I'm well, on Epic's side. But are you, know? you on Epic's side or just on ga like, gamer's side? Ga right? Like, <laughs> right, 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 right. No, I'm on Epic's side. Um, <laughs> money, right? like, I'm just on gamers. Like, those people that are passionate and now this is now brought to light to the general sure. public on how much Apple is making out of these cuts of game. For sure. I'm just like, look. Like, can we keep this fight going for those smaller developers that are trying to get their game seen? Yeah. Especially so, because Apple has Apple Arcade. And it's like, to make that more of a selling point for developers to develop games on their yeah. um, mm -hmm. phones, you would want to make it available so they could use Unreal Engine. So you could mm -hmm. then, as Apple, scout those games and be like, this is an amazing game. We want it in Apple Arcade. Right? Like, they're pinning themselves in the face by doing this it's like a punch that's ricocheting off of epic and gonna slap them in the face right like it's right just now, these yeah. are two giant like yeah. mega corporations going mm -hmm. at it and yes. to be yeah. honest no matter how big fortnite is no matter how big epic is having unreal engine apple's apple like yeah, yeah. Well, no matter to which way around it they i think they win this but no, man. It is no. the right, it's the <laughs> right fight for Epic to fight, and I'm glad that they're putting their foot down. I just don't understand why it took them so long to put their foot down. I guess, to my understanding, it's just like an enough's enough scenario, or it's just like, hey, uh, Fortnite's pretty freaking big now. We're putting Joker into the game. We got Dead <laughs> Batman, you know, Captain America. We're we're making a lot of money now to the point where if we were to say something, people are gonna listen. It's and and maybe maybe now it is just like an enough enough scenario of them being big enough to know that they have a voice that can be heard. So I give them credit for that. But at the same time, again, I don't know. I ju I'm just playing devil's advocate in the case that it's like, why were they just? allowing it to happen for as long as it did why why now so, do we put our foot down what if what so if I we think, yeah, sorry go ahead oh no i was just gonna say i think apple is changing their gaming policies because on august 6th um it was reported that they turned down microsoft's x cloud uh there's supposed to be some compatibility there and then okay. on august 7th it directly following that up uh, Facebook uh, wanted to work with them to get yeah, gaming exactly. software onto iOS. And they said, no, you can't do it because they just wanted it to be that people could watch Facebook gaming streams and then play like words yeah. with friends or other Facebook simple games. And they said right. no to that completely. Mm -hmm. So I think that Apple is starting to make moves to tighten up their gaming kind of sector a little bit. I think yeah. that they've been behind on the gaming sector for so long. Now they're like, we got to do something. We got to pick it up here.
Okay. You know, you know what they need though. I think to really help this fight, they need like Supercell, like a Clash Royale, the devs behind that, like those big mobile companies to come out and speak out about this and be on Epic side. If Epic's really going to win this fight, I really am rooting need for not necessarily Epic Temtem. guests, but the devs. Sorry, what? What yes. time is that? Need the developers of Temtem. Yes. yes. <laughs> the Temtem They're the Apple. heroes. <laughs> what? Well, Oh my I mean, gosh. Or I you know like, what? Like Niantic or Niantic. I always confuse how to pronounce that one. But Pokemon Go, go. like you need oh, them okay. like yeah, one of the mobile games to really be on board with this. Go ahead, Alex. Right. Actually, no, that's a great point. Um, I think part of this too is just like Apple just wants to remain or like keep control because like that's like the big problem is that with Apple having all this power, they literally control the market, and so it's like it. I mean, yeah, I mean they're taking a a lot of money which is just like really it's like really messed up because they already have control of the market you see what i'm saying it's like they're making all this money off other people like doing work for them and i mean it's a step in the right direction i agree with caboose in the sense that it's like it's really weird to be like oh yeah i'm on team epic even though they are these huge (laughs) mega corporations and like what camille said like both of these companies could like you know do a lot of uh, you know, <laughs> with the things that they have, it's, it's like funny. To be like, I'm like, I bet, I mean, we kind of do that every day anyway with everything, like you know, Amazon, Apple, like Microsoft, everything. Um, so I mean, this is, I, I agree with you completely. Actually, I, I really love that you brought up that point that, like, if another developer was on board, like Niantic, I think that would be huge. Mm-hmm. And so, that could definitely give them a fighting chance, yeah, yeah. And I really think it's wrong to remove like the, the dev tools, like the yes. the Unreal Engine yeah. stuff, because like that that definitely could be a huge blow even to some of the stuff that's being developed for Apple Arcade. Um, and I think it's actually just coming out now that Epic Games is asking the court to stop Apple's pulling of its the uh, of the dev tools, um, and that'll be coming next week. So like, Ooh. I don't know. I mean, like it, this is this is uh, this is crazy. It's unprecedented. This is something that I don't think anybody saw coming or would have expected to see in like yeah. a million years. <laughs> like that <laughs> Fortnite commercial thing that they did. <laughs> yeah. Fortnite, that was wild. Uh, yeah. I did not expect something like that. So this whole thing, I, I definitely really get it now, though. Yeah. With, like, well, someone yeah. mentioned on Twitter that it also could be a nod, and I forgot about this. Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and the Google CEOs were just at Capitol Hill yeah. for questioning over yeah. the their profit margins I, and privacy information. Yeah. This could be a nod, and the the lawsuit didn't directly address any privacy or information concerns, but it did bring up some of the same uh, act, the Sherman Act, which was brought up in the hearing uh, at Capitol Hill with these big companies. They yeah. Apple could be brought back to the u.s government you know to answer for their for the you know the profits that they're taking on these because their practices are you know it's a trust they they're monopolizing on the ios market and now even more so this action just shows that they're willing to stomp out small developers and opportunity to maintain their money and their power Mm -hmm. and it's interesting too because i think in, when you look at the world, I think there's more Android users um, than there are like iOS, and that obviously has to do a lot in Asia, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but like my beef, why I've always used Android is stupid lightning cables. I hate that. <laughs> I hate lightning cables. I hate that you always have. I, it's so small, but I'm just like, why? Why are you using lightning cables when everyone else is on USB C? Don't do this. Don't do this. Now they're on USB C. It's like, what? Mm-hmm. Apple, make Unreal. up your mind. That's they only do proprietary until it works. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, but maybe now it's like they won't be able to do the things like that if people keep talking or these major companies keep talking out about it. I'm pretty sure we're going to keep seeing more news come out from this over and over again because this is something that I think it's going to take years. It's a year fight. Like, you know, it's oh, yeah. just not going to be yeah. over this year. This oh, is going to yeah. keep going. Um, and it's going to be interesting how this could change and impact mobile gaming. Do you think we'll see a big change from this? Yeah. Malik? Yeah, I think yeah, I think mobile gaming is going to change a lot. I think yeah. also too the with everything that they're doing on the Epic Game Store, I think that they get set back a lot. I think that cuz this a lot of people forget too, this applies to Macs like computers and mobile games. 
So any sort of small developer that wanted to get their games on to, you know, Apple and uh, PC, I think that they're going to pull out, uh, you know, from Unreal Engine and they might have to start developing somewhere else just to get their game on the market. Because do you either eat those development costs and start over on a new, you know, like development software? Right. Or do you just accept half of the audience that you would have had? And yeah, that I, is going to be a really pill, hard pill to swallow for a lot of companies. What would yeah. you guys do? Would you guys accept uh, just a smaller audience? No, I always go like, for I the bigger like audience. I would, no, yeah. I would do the smaller audience because then you have your niche. Plus, you'll have like, you'll have maybe, maybe because of this, maybe. Okay, let's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe how um, Epic is kind of talking about wanting the courts to rule against um, Apple pulling the Unreal Engine, like and Unreal Development Tools. Maybe if that actually does not go through and Apple's still able to keep those tools out of iOS, Epic will put out like some sort of program to help developers push their games. Maybe like we could still see a lot of that happening elsewhere like right so, uh, yeah. indie movement uh yeah. playstation 3 era, i think or even like look at what nintendo's done for indie as well yeah. right yeah. So it's like i feel like there's so many other options and quite frankly if you're you have so many barriers on ios and you it would probably be a less money to produce because now you're not doing two different versions of the games, right? Um, and you could then have or apply for that support. I would do that and find my niche. And then it get, if it gets traction, people will hear about it anyways and may want it on the Apple Store. And then they have to speak to Apple about that, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's very true. positive. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really, really positive outlook on life. I, I try to keep it. <laughs> Very I glass half full. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to help the people. <laughs> you have glass half full. I'm gonna grab a glass of water while we take a break. How about that? All right. All right. We'll be right, right. Back to that. <laughs> See you in a bit. 